On this video, we are going to talk about one of the best things you can do for your career as a developer, and that is building side projects. Annyeonghaseyo, Hashimnika. Nicolas, Inmida, and my mission for this video is to convince you to start your side project and to help you finish it. So first, let me tell you the reason why you should start a side project today, and then I will show you how to finish what you start by avoiding the mistakes I made. Building a side project will help you no matter what level you're on as a developer. If you are a beginner, making a side project is the ultimate way of learning by doing. It is also the only way I found to escape from tutorial hell. Tutorial hell is where many people that are learning to code get stuck. They find themselves taking course after course without feeling good enough or ready to start a project on their own. I've been there. When I was learning to code, I did feel like I could follow tutorials and books. But I always felt paralyzed when I had to start a project from zero, by myself, with no one to hold my hand, looking at an empty file that I was supposed to fill with my code. Now this happens because we have a voice in our head that tells us that we don't know enough yet, that we are not ready. The best way to know if that voice is correct or not is to build something. If that voice is correct, if you actually don't know enough, by building something, you will know what you don't know. And if that voice is incorrect, that means that you are just lacking self-confidence and it's time to move on to the next level. If you are not a beginner anymore and now you feel ready to go out and look for a job, having 10 cool side projects will look better than just having certificates and a college degree. If there is a company you want to go to, you can build side projects related to the company and what you would like to do for them. If you want to be a front-end developer, then maybe clone the company's website, but make it better, give it a redesign, and make it load faster. If you want to be a mobile developer, build an app related to the company, its products or its users. And if you want to be a freelancer, build projects that you would like to get hired to make. Or if you want to be a backend developer, you can simulate the design of an API and database models of a big startup. Let your code speak for you. If you already have a job, you still need to build side projects. As we know, this industry moves at the speed of light and you, my friend, need to be up to date. A side project gives you the perfect opportunity to try technologies that you are curious about, to try a new programming language or to use and evaluate a new database. It gives you room to feel like a beginner again. It keeps you humble. It puts you out of your comfort zone and who knows, maybe it will allow you to change your job or learn something that will give you a promotion. It will also make you wear different hats. You might have to do design. Maybe you will learn about deploying, security, customer service. You will grow as a person as well. Building an idea from start to publishing it will teach you a lot. And lastly, the reason why you should build side projects, no matter what level of developer you are, is because it reminds you how cool your job is. We can build something out of nothing and we don't have to ask anyone for permission to do it. You don't need a license or a permit from the government to make something and publish it. There isn't a middleman. Never in the history of the world, creativity has been this permissionless and unbound. You can literally start a company from your couch. If you already have an idea that you wanna make, awesome. But if you don't, don't worry. The beautiful thing about side projects is that you can make them as big, small, serious, or silly as you want. If you need ideas of something to make, see if you can scratch your own itch. This means don't worry about building something that millions of people are going to use. Build something that you and maybe your friends and family need. Now, my family is fairly big. I have lots of uncles and cousins and it's hard to keep track of all of their birthdays. So I built a tiny bot that every day checked to see if it was someone's birthday. And if it was, it would send an SMS message to all the family telling them whose birthday it was. That is just an example. And I'm sure you will be able to find an idea like that around you in no time. And also don't worry if your side project idea already exists. It does not have to be unique. If there is a similar product out there, you can learn from it and improve it. It is also a very good sign. If you have an idea, but someone built it first, that means that your idea is actually useful for other people, which means you have a high chance of getting real users. 
I did that once. There is a side project I made that is an improvement of an already existing product, just a bit different, and it's actually earning a few dollars every month. So if I convinced you to start your side project, now is when the hard part comes, which is actually finishing it. Starting something, telling people you're starting something, going to Starbucks and taking a photo with your laptop and an ice Americano, that is the easy part. The hard part is to complete what you started, which is where I have failed countless times. And I would like to share some of my mistakes so you can avoid them. The biggest mistake I always make is being too ambitious with the idea I want to make. The scope of the project is directly related to the chances of you not finishing it. The bigger the scope is, the more features you plan, and the bigger the chances of you not finishing the project are. Take an idea and reduce it to its most basic features, an MVP, a minimum viable product. Leave only the features that are required for the app to be able to work. Now do this especially with your first side projects. It is very easy to lose focus and motivation. So you need to help yourself finish your projects by not being too ambitious with what you want to build. Instead, make a list of all the features you would like your project to have and make a promise to yourself that after you finish the project and if it gets 50 users, then you will implement those features. Another mistake I make and the reason why my computer is a graveyard of unfinished projects is not having a deadline. Personally, if I don't have a deadline, I don't get any work done. So I have to come up with an artificial deadline, something that gives me a sense of urgency, a date when things need to be published and done. Having a deadline also allows you to make a schedule to plan ahead, to know what kind of code you should be writing today. A very good way to push yourself to finish your projects is to join a hackathon, an event where you will meet like-minded people that are builders like you that need to launch and finish before the hackathon ends. I still remember my first hackathon and it was an amazing experience. You can join a physical hackathon or a virtual one. The point is to feel the peer pressure of knowing that there are other people working next to you and other teams competing against you. Usually hackathons also have a price, so it's also nice to know that you could potentially be getting paid to build your side project. They also bring exposure to you and your project. You might also be able to form a team and launch a startup for real. If you can't find a hackathon, then throw one yourself. Find five co-workers or friends, order some pizza, rent an office, start Friday and finish Sunday. That brings me to another thing that will help you finish your ideas faster and that is having a team mate. If you build an idea on your own, it is hard to find the motivation to keep going sometimes. This happens to me a lot. But if you have a teammate, you can motivate each other and you will find yourself finishing the project because you don't want to let the other person down. And last but not least, something that really helped me finish what I was building is not talking about what I am building. Sometimes talking about what you're going to do and how you're gonna do it gives you a false sense of accomplishment. Many people create a GitHub page for their project. They take the coding at Starbucks photo. They choose the name for the project and they even buy the .com domain, even before they write a single line of code. Most people that do this, including me, don't actually finish what they start because after the Instagram pics and the .com domains come the long days of code that are not glamorous at all. It's better to be quiet and build in silence rather than being noisy and having nothing to show for at the end of the day. I hope that after this video, you feel inspired to start your side project. And I also hope that you can finish and launch your project and avoid the mistakes I made. As I mentioned before, joining a hackathon is an amazing way of building a product, practicing your skills and potentially winning prizes for you and your team. This is why the sponsor of this video, Appetizer, wants to invite you to a free hackathon. The project of the hackathon is to build a project utilizing the open APIs from Appetizer.kr. Appetizer is a platform where you can find all kinds of APIs for your projects. They are like an API aggregator. Currently, they have 120 APIs, like text to video, open banking, healthcare data, translation, face recognition, electronic contracts, payments, among many others. The hackathon is organized with the help of the Korean government and Naver Cloud. You can register as an individual or as a team of up to five people. 
The total prize pool for the event is $27,000. And you can also receive mentoring from the companies that make the APIs themselves. Registration is open until October 7th. So click the link below to register right now. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.